This afternoon, Lute Olsen brings his top-ranked Arizona Wildcats and Player of the Year candidates Sean Elliott into Pauley Pavilion to tangle with the Bruins of UCLA. Then we shift gears to the Eagle Trace Golf Course in Coral Springs, Florida for third-round coverage of the Honda Classic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our studios in New York. I'm Gail Gardner. College basketball golf ahead this afternoon on NBC. The stiffest penalty ever given by a professional sports league was handed out today by the National Hockey League. The NHL expelling Detroit Red Wings forward Bob Probert for life. Probert, who has a history of alcohol abuse, was arrested Thursday, charged with trying to smuggle cocaine from Canada to the United States. Probert is just 23. He'll be given a formal hearing by the NHL after criminal proceedings are disposed with. The lifetime ban will take effect pending the hearing. Probert, charged with one count of trying to import cocaine, faces up to 20 years in prison. Well, Daryl Strawberry is back with the Mets after scuffling with Keith Hernandez on Thursday and missing yesterday's game because of a continuing contract dispute. Strawberry, with two years left on his present contract, wanted it renegotiated and extended two more years. The Mets refused, saying they'll deal with him after the season. Strawberry returned today and had this to say about his demands before this afternoon's game against the Dodgers. Well, what worries me about the whole situation, if, if it was an injury that occurred in, um, in this season, there's no way in the world a ball club is going to pick up that option of my contract. So, you know, all I ask for is, a, is some type of security and knowing that, knowing that I was going to be around for the next uh, three or four years. But it didn't work out, and that's just something you have to live with. I learned, uh, I learned to live with a lot of things, and this is another thing I have to live with. All right, Darrell actually started today's game in right field. The bottom of the third with two men on. Facing the Dodgers, Tim Belcher is shot to straightaway center field. The three-run homer, three homer with the Mets on top, a three to two, coming home. Uh, yeah, Keith Hernandez there to greet him at the plate below five. But the Dodgers have now taken the lead. They lead a six to three in the fifth inning. Strawberry added today that he will stop demanding a contract re renegotiation and as of now intends to leave the club when his present contract is up. Well, later on today here on NBC, third round of the Honda Classic from Coral Springs, Florida. Hot and sunny today. They were able to complete the rain-delayed second round this morning. After two, Dan Pohl had a three-stroke lead over Buddy Gardner and Ted Schultz. The leader's on the course right now, and that's exactly where they stand. Payne Stewart and Jimmy Carter four back. Time now to send you out to Pauley Pavilion, where UCLA faces top-ranked Arizona. In the storied basketball history of UCLA, it was Lou Alcindor who rewrote the Bruins record book. Along the way, he also became the top scorer in what was then the Pac-8 Conference. It was in 1968, during Alcindor's sophomore season, that Sean Elliott was born in Tucson, Arizona. And it is now Sean Elliott of the University of Arizona who has catapulted to the plateau of number one score in Pac-10 history. This afternoon, Sean Elliott and his number one ranked Wildcats will face the Bruins of UCLA. of college basketball on NBC Sports. Today, All-American Sean Elliott and the Wildcats of top-ranked Arizona take on Jerome Poo Richardson and the UCLA Bruins. Poo adding to his all-time UCLA assist record. From Pauley Pavilion, college basketball is brought to you by Budweiser Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Craftsman, people who depend on tools depend on Craftsman. And by State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. UCLA, it is their final home game of the season. A farewell 
to the seniors a day to remember for UCLA's all-time assist leader, Jerome Poole Richardson. Capacity crowd of Pauley Pavilion as Poole Richardson and the Bruins come in at 19-7 and, and face a difficult task against number one ranked Arizona. The Wildcats beat UCLA by 38 points two weeks ago in Tucson. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert along with Bucky Waters. And in that wipeout in Tucson back on February the 18th, Sean Elliott had a sensational 35-point game. But you talk to the UCLA coaches, and the man they're most concerned about is the shot-blocking specialist, double zero, Anthony Cook, who just creates havoc defensively. AC, as he's affectionately called by his team, not by anybody else, is an incredible force. He, uh, he's always been tough inside, and coaches appreciate that. Everybody walks away saying, Sean Elliott is a heck of a player, but the guy that killed us was Cook. With Tom Tolbert's graduation, he has expanded his game, now scoring 17 points a game. So AC is now DC, and he's killing them both ways. And the pressure is certainly on Poo Richardson in this, this home finale. Offensively, he quarterbacks the team. Defensively, from time to time, he will be matched against Sean Elliott. Well, it's, it's incredible that he would get that assignment. He gives away seven inches. But Jim Herrick said, he's tough. He's my best defensive player. And I've got to go with somebody that's going to make Elliott work for his points. We know all about the, the numbers, uh, the assists, the points. For Poo Richardson, this is emotion. And the only number that they really care about is that 38-point loss, the worst in UCLA history. Walt Hazard left this team with Boo Richardson as the main man. He's got a chance to close his career today with a tough defensive assignment and controlling a tough Arizona defense. So UCLA and top-ranked Arizona. It is coming up here on NBC. We'll be back at Pauley right after these messages. taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. Family transportation has come a long way. And here's the next step. The new Geo Prism. Five-door hatchback, four-door sedan. Japanese design, American built. To carry today's families with more convenience, space, and a commitment to quality. Geo Prism. Part of the geologic line. Now, at selected Chevrolet dealers. It's the logical way to go. Jeep Racing Team. The winningest team in off-road racing goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So, make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. Ordinary windows versus windowscaping. Windows, windowscaping. Windows, windowscaping. See the windowscaping experts only at the Pella Window Store. If your car pulls to one side, let Midas check your alignment. At Midas, trained professionals with the latest technology align your car right. You see, we're serious about safety. Hey, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. The Wildcats of Arizona with a record of 23-3, and 16-1 and in the Pac-10. They come off a victory Thursday night at Washington State, an adventure getting and uh, making it out of uh, Spokane to get here to the Los Angeles area after Arizona won at Washington State, 74-48, to clinch its third Pac-10 title in four years. As you look at the starting lineup of Elliott, Bushler, Cook, Lofton, the master of the steel, and Muleball. UCLA, 19-7, 13-4 in Pac-10 competition. 
They have won three straight, nine of their last 11. Wilson, the sensational freshman, McLean, Walker, Martin, and Richardson. The officials out of the Pac-10, Charles Reigns, the referee. The umpires, Jerry White and Richie Ballesteros. As Lofton controls, moving on Martin. This is Muleback. And it will be UCLA ball. The backcourt of Pooh Richardson, a senior out of Philadelphia, freshman Derek Martin, who has taken over at the off-guard position because of the injury that suffered by Gerald Matkins. Nice pass for Trevor Wilson, and UCLA up by the score of 2-0. Critical matchup early. Pooh Richardson down, being posted up by Sean, Earl, Sean Elliott. And Bushler blew the stop. Wilson off the acceleration and rebounded by Bushler. Judd Bushler, a junior from Poway, California, just outside of San Diego. And Richardson, as we mentioned, matched with Elliott. Here is Elliott. Martin, yes. Martin, who's been in a shooting slump. That's an ominous sign for the Bruin fans. And it was without any hesitation at all. He just pulled up and nailed it. The emotion in this building is very impressive. But then it was also in Tucson. 38 points, the worst in UCLA history. Here's Cook. So Arizona on the board, UCLA with a 4-2 lead. This UCLA and Arizona's finale of the regular season, the Pac-10 tournament gets underway Thursday at the Forum in Inglewood. Arizona's already clinched first place. UCLA has already clinched third. They could not meet in the tournament until the finals, and that's good news for UCLA. Wilson, the tip by Walker, rare inside move for Kevin Walker, who has been going at a blistering pace from three-point range. Sean Elliott taking Richardson outside, but on the swing, there he goes, taking him into the lane. And he was hit on a reach in, the first foul of the game. The term's been coined for Elliott, point forward. He is an offensive machine, a three-point shooter, a post-up player. He literally does it all. But what happens is he mesmerizes you with his offensive moves, and it's guys like Cook down inside that are just killing you. Kevin Walker called on that foul. Mulebach, Lofton. UCLA zone now out of the out of bounds. Lofton with the step around Wilson, and the game is tied at four. Ken Lofton, a terrific all-around athlete. In fact, uh, he was drafted by the Houston Astros and uh, played with the uh, rookie league last summer in the uh, Houston Astro chain. Walker looking for the three-pointer. Here's McLean, and the board swept by Bushler. A lot of that emotion that UCLA felt early now has drained down. Sometimes you can get too psyched in responding to a crowd like this, senior day and all of that. Look for a little relapse here by the Bruins, then they'll come back. Ilbach providing Arizona with a 6-4 lead, so four unanswered by UCLA. Here's Richardson from three! And the Bruins by one. Poo Richardson has been on fire from three-point range. And this after he did not have any success in his previous three years from downtown. Mulebach with the step and the bucket. And Arizona takes a one-point lead. 8-7, three and a half minutes gone by before capacity crowd better than 12,500 at Pauley Pavilion. The defensive attention right now to Sean Elliott is hurting the Bruins. It's other people, which is the secret why Arizona's number one. They're a very balanced team. Walker under pressure. And Bucky, you notice Arizona looking to deny the three-point shot of Kevin Walker, but he has that quick release. He just keeps backing out, and at 6'11", he goes right over the top. That one was some Santa Monica. Foul committed by number 50. Kevin Walker, that's his second. He's very upset.
Kevin Walker reacting strenuously and was hit with a technical foul, a little bit too aggressive on the reaction. Cook moving to the middle with the long arms and the feathery touch, gets it on the rim. We couldn't really see the play. Walker, very tough on himself. Yesterday in practice, he continually berated himself for a dumb pass or a dumb shot. That time he vented on the official, and it's expensive. But this early in the game, it won't be a big factor, and it may just jack this crowd up a little bit more, and it certainly brought Tim Herrick into it. Cook is only a 62% free throw shooter, and now Herrick has been called for a technical. And he is hot. Notice the rolled-up program. I asked him about that and asked if it was a carryover from John Wooden, who did it for so many years in this building. He said, no, it's his reminder to not let anything upset him. Don't be discouraged. Keep your cool and coach your team. He needs to think about that right now. He lost it. And the technicals now being... Taken by Sean Elliott, who is an 82% free throw shooter. Sean Elliott not only had 35 points in that earlier game against UCLA, had a career high of 11 assists. And in the game, he passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the Pac-10's all-time scorer. There should be some asterisks on that one, though, Mark, when you consider there was no dunk and Lewis Alcindor did it in three years, Elliott did it in four, and also dunking was not allowed at that time. So there are some circumstances that play on those numbers, but this is one great college basketball player, Sean Elliott. And no three-point uh, shot at that time. Timeout has been called. We'll be right back. When I say... When I say shark. Copiers. When I, when I, when I say shark. Computers. Shark. shark. When I say shark, I mean. Calculators. I mean. Fax machines. I mean. T -t 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 typewriters. I mean business. When I say shark, I mean business. From shark minds come shark products. When I say shark, I mean business. Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's going to work for their budget and little Lindsay's future, too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In 1977, Charlie Ewell bought a brand new John Deere. Can I drive it someday, Dad? Someday, Tommy, someday. Years passed, and the John Deere was still running strong. Can I drive it now, Dad? Have to be a little bigger, son. Today, Charlie's John Deere still runs like the day he got it. Here's your big chance, son. Sounds fun, Dad. See ya. Which points out two things. You can count on a John Deere running for years and years. And you can count on being the one running it. Tony the Tiger Lopez. This dangerous young champion mauls his opponents with stinging jabs and crisp right hands. Rocky Lockridge, it's time for war, and the veteran wants the title back. The IBF Junior Lightweight Championship, the rematch of Ring Magazine's Fight of the Year, live on NBC Sports World. Poor Richardson of UCLA pleading his case to the official, Jim Herrick was hit with a technical, objecting to the technical foul on Kevin Walker. That put Anthony Cook on the line. He hit the two shooting fouls, and then Elliott hit the three free throws. That for the one technical call on Walker, and a technical on the coach is uh, two foul shots. So this is a potential seven-point possession situation. Tremendous camera work there with uh, Pooh Richardson, who has already acknowledged the consummate Philly guard for his skills, appearing to be a Philadelphia lawyer under those circumstances. He had to restrain Herrick. He was, uh, he was right on the edge of another one. So Elliott with his first field goal, and Arizona takes a four-point lead, 14 to 10. Four and a half gone by in this first half. The thing about Arizona is they walk out on people. They get big leads early. 
McLean is rejected and fouled by Cook. Don McLean, the freshman from Simi Valley, California, will go to the line. And Harrick wanted a goal 10, and he is very upset right at the start. So McLean, an 83% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Well, Georgia by six over Auburn in the uh, second half, and Michigan by 19 over Iowa. Iowa still reeling from that upset loss by Michigan State. It in Ames, not doing well today at all. Cook, that's typical of his play inside. He just nailed that ball, and everybody's got to think about it when they go back inside again. Full court pressure now by the Bruins. Elliott Trapp, Arizona now with a two-point lead. Yes, got it down, and Cook, oh! A facial provided by Anthony Cook, and Arizona now leads 16-12. Sean Elliott at 6-9 looked right over the trap of the small UCLA guards, threw a three-quarter court pass right on the money, and AC drains it. Charles Rushelin has come on for the first time. McLean off a double team, threw the foul, and Lute Olsen did not like the call as Bushler collects his first. Here's the one-two punch, Mr. Outside. Air Elliott to A.C. Anthony Cook. Comparisons to Bill Russell are premature on A.C. Cook, but one thing is certain, both of them were late bloomers, slender guys who got stronger and better, and certainly the offensive production by Cook with more room in the lane with the graduation of Tom Tolbert has added his dimension. Trevor Wilson. Banking one home, his second field goal. And UCLA is down 16-14. Lofton moving across against Martin. Lofton with the uh, changeover on the dribble. Here's Muehlbach. Elliott wants Richardson down low. He's directing traffic. Cook getting it out. Lofton, yes. Ken Lofton, who was only a 40% shooter, has hit two out of two. That was a three-point bucket, 19-14, Arizona, by five, with six minutes gone by. Marv Albert, Bucky Waters from Pauley Pavilion. Bad pass, Martin able to save it. Looked like Parishnikov on that sideline. Cook with the rebound, Lofton for Muehlbach with room. Elliott not able to connect, Bushler keeps it alive, and here's Elliott. Rebounded by Wilson. Eric up again on that one. He wanted a technical for Elliott hanging on the rim. Did not get it. Didn't get the technical either. UCLA coming off a win over California at Berkeley Thursday night, winning by eight. Wilson and Bushler all over the board. Oh, he's one tough kid. Reminds me of San Bode from Missouri. All really good teams one of those in-between guys that do everything for you. Bushler through the foul, hit by McLean, so McLean commits his first. There's Don McLean, one of the nation's most sought-after players last year as a high school senior. He averaged 31 a game. Only the third-team foul on UCLA. Bushler keeping it alive. And that is his first field goal, but Arizona has its biggest lead, 21-14. Bushler, one of those California players that got away, supposedly very interested in UCLA. Something happened, didn't work, and Lute Olsen making a big dent in California players. Hold it, hold it. Holding foul on Matt Muehlbach. That is his first. And Arizona committing its third team foul. Arizona starting to make its move. Seven points now. This is uh, the way they operate. They're so powerful offensively that just walk away from you. And you look up and you have this big deficit. And they usually get off uh, quickly, as uh, the Blue Devils of Duke can attest to last week, although Duke got back into it. Off the steal. Lofton for Bushler. Arizona leading 23-14. Are they impressive or what? Right here in Pauley, not intimidated. And, of course, they've had a tough stretch with tough games and travel problems, and they worked hard last night. I mean, they really worked hard at 8 o'clock in this building. Richardson rejected by Cook. 
Lofton, alley-oops. Bushler did well to uh, keep it in play. Here comes Trevor Wilson. And Richardson is hit by Muehlbach. Trevor Wilson, who has been converted to a guard due to the thin UCLA bench, looking pretty good as a point player that time. Substitution. UCLA, Keith Owens checking in for the first time. Timeout is taken. We'll be back here at Pauley in a moment. My mom's going to Tokyo on business. Tokyo, where's that? About a million miles away. Wow, she better bring a sweater. Every day, Northwest flies from more of the U.S. to more of Asia than any other airline. You just got a frequent flyer award, huh? That's right. You don't fly frequently. No, infrequently. How can you be a frequent flyer if you don't fly frequently? How can I hit the ball if you're talking How to me? How can you hit the ball if you're going to be talking over there? On Northwest, you don't have to fly a lot to earn a free trip fast. Family transportation has come a long way. And here's the next step, the new Geo Prism. Five-door hatchback, four-door sedan. Japanese designed, American built. To carry today's families with more economy, comfort, and a commitment to quality. Geo Prism, part of the Geologic line. Now, in selected Chevrolet dealers. It's the logical way to go. Move ahead in any career, ask yourself, can I work with a team? Can I take on a tough job and see it through? You can learn how in the Army, so when you set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat. It started a car deserted on a frozen lake for four months, and 40 cars after two and a half hours with their lights left on. Today's Die Hard, with power to start your car, and a whole lot more. Sunday, the Duke Blue Devils battle the Tar Heels of North Carolina. College basketball, it's the stuff weekends are made of on NBC Sports. And there is the Wizard of Westwood, John Wood. Bucky, UCLA Sports Information Director Mark Gellens was telling us that uh, some 19-year-old student came up to him at a game last week and said, who's that older guy signing all those autographs? And that older guy was that man. John Wooden, have some of today's youngsters forgotten already? A generation gap? What he did will never be repeated, in my opinion. He's still a gentleman, looks in excellent condition. The little blonde there was his great-grandson. Has uh, a lot of nice things to say about Jim Herrick. Likes the way this program is going. In fact, Herrick calls him after every game. UCLA in possession. They're trailing. By 9, 23, 14. And the call made against uh, Arizona. Lofton picking up his first. And Don McClain very upset as being restrained by Keith Owens. Earlier, Kevin Walker was hit with a technical, as was coach Jim Herrick. So this a very emotional first half for the Bruins. All you have to do is look at the tape of the last game in Arizona and know why UCLA is emotional. There's nothing really at stake in this game. Uh, I think UCLA has a, a shot in the tournament, and uh, it's just a lot of pride, a lot of confidence for the Bruins. Cook on the rebound off the McLean miss. Harvey Mason, a junior guard, has come on for the first time for Arizona. Muehlbach sitting down. He has two fouls. There's Cook getting it back. That's Mason. Picked up by Rushelon. Elliott still gets airborne on his move to the basket, and he should be called for charging on that move. He's leaning in. And he doesn't have to leave the floor. At 6'8", six, 6'9", six, he can pass the ball right over the top of Pooh without that, that. It's really a habit. He gets to the paint, and he soars, and his momentum carries him forward. I think if UCLA would not try to get up in the air with him, hold their ground, they might be able to draw a charge or two. And Sean Elliott now four for four from the foul line. Arizona's all-time leading scorer. One of the superb one-on-one -on -one players in the country, therefore a very difficult assignment for the six-foot-one, Poole Richardson. Arizona 25 and UCLA 
14 as Pooh handles against Mason. It's senior day and it's his day. Pooh has both ends of the floor. UCLA has gone cold after the good start. Elliott gives it up, takes Pooh right to the post. Cook. Rebound Rushlin. And the foul on Elliott. Sean Elliott commits his first. He underestimated Rushlin that time. Rushlin with a 45 inch vertical leap. It was just too much for Elliott to overcome. That's about the only thing he's done wrong today. Incredible performance. It is Richardson and Martin in the backcourt. Owens up front, along with McLean and Rushlin. Richardson, yes. Over the past summer, Magic Johnson and one time Bruin and now an assistant coach, Brad Holland, worked with Pooh Richardson on shot selection and form, and he has really come a long way, as has that man offensively. Anthony Cook, who is showing his entire repertoire, seven points for Cook, and Arizona leads 27-16 with 10 minutes left in this first half. Owen setting the pick. Richardson off the hesitation. Nearly stepped out. Here's a three-point attempt by Martin. Derek Martin. And Arizona now leads 27-19. Martin was 0 for 6 against the Golden Bears of California on Thursday night, typifying the slump he's been in. And if he's hitting threes, UCLA's breathing. Cook on the rebound. Lofton and Mason now in the backcourt. Lofton nearly lost the dribble. Here's Bushler. Bushler again. He is a master of the putback. He has six points, and he has seven rebounds. Boy, he's tough on that offensive board. Gets the loose ball, gets the stick back. Richardson requesting the pick. Martin from two-point range. Owens. Richardson, the all-time assist leader, really having a difficult time with Arizona smothering on the baseline. Finds Martin for the three. He's doing everything today. He's taking care of the ball. He's guarding Elliott. UCLA a little soft inside, has no inside game. That time they challenge Cook and get the second foul. Look for them to go right back inside and try to get the third. And Keith Owens, not a good free throw shooter, 52%, able to convert three-point play. And UCLA is down by seven as they go to the trap on Elliott. Trevor Wilson has returned. Matt Othick has come on for the first time for Arizona. Off the steal, Richardson moving on Othick. Walker, Richardson from three, yes! And the Bruins battle their way back, move within four. During the first two years of the three-point shot, Pooh Richardson took only 15 shots in two years. He was four for 15. Now. Going into this game, he was 38 for 74. And that's confidence. It will be UCLA ball. Hoffick looking to locate Elliott. Could not watch the work here of Pooh Richardson. That's what everyone has known him for, giving the ball up. Here he's on both ends. The elbow is in tight, and the shot even looks like Brad Holland, the fine outside shooter. He's cloned it. And he's gone to a first-round draft choice as well with the added dimension of that three-point shot. Well, the feeling was that his form was inconsistent. That is not the case anymore. Trevor Wilson moving UCLA with him two, and the Bruins on a run. They were down by 11, and now trail by two, and this crowd is going wild. When they played the last time at this point in the game, it was over. The last rights were being read. Elliott. No, 
Not able to hit the three, but Bushler is there again. His fourth field goal. He has eight points, and he has eight rebounds. Arizona by four, 31-27. And they haven't run a thing for Bushler. He gets him on his own. Rushelin. Wilson. And rebounded by Bushler. Trevor Wilson's got to get in this game for UCLA. He's being hurt on his side of the board, and he's not scoring. Mulebach from three. Arizona has had its difficulties now. Wilson keeping it alive and hitting the reverse to move within two. 31-29. What a smart play. Wilson using the rim to protect, knowing that Anthony Cook was breathing down his back. Smart play. And Lute Olson of Arizona wants to talk it over. Timeout is called. Arizona 31 and UCLA 29. My wild Irish rose. Someday for my sake she may let me taste the blue from my wild Irish rose. On St. Patty's Day, celebrate with the only American beer that's also brewed and bottled in Ireland, Budweiser. How do you spot a MetLife representative? He's intelligent. Knowledgeable, concerned, and caring, friendly, and ready to listen. A big nose and floppy ears are optional. Thank you. Get met. It pays. Well, somebody ordered a knish. Where are you? At the Second Avenue Deli in Manhattan. They recently added something new to the menu. Me on the, bag. the phone number of their Marotta fax machine. The guys say that before they bought the Marotta, things were pretty hectic behind the counter. Marotta fax machines. Three-time British Open winner Seve Ballesteros, Curtis Strange, and a field of golfing greats tee off at the Honda Classic this weekend on NBC. 49-year-old Jim Harrick. He's dreamed about coaching the Bruins of UCLA since growing up in Charleston, West Virginia. In his first season here in Westwood, he replaced Walt Hazard, a one-time UCLA assistant coach under Gary Cunningham, also an assistant at Utah State. His first head coaching position, Pepperdine, did a nice job in nine years at four NCAA teams, and two went to the NIT. Five Bruin head coaches averaged two and a half years. The feeling here is that this man will bring some continuity. He wears well, he's liked, very organized in practice, and he's already given notice that he can keep the best players in Southern California right here. That's the way it used to be. Gilbot and Lofton in the backcourt. Elliott up front with Cook and Bushler. So Arizona back to its starting lineup. And they're down to 15 on the shot clock. Down to five on the shot clock. Down to three. Here's Elliott. And Arizona leads 33-29. Elliott. That's what the marquee players do to you. Take that shot clock right down and make a tough shot. After you've played defense for 42 seconds with all your heart, you're down three more. Elliott has nine points. He's the high man. Bushler with eight points along with nine rebounds. Rushelin. And rebounded by Cook. Five and a half remaining in this first half. Marv Albert, Bucky Waters from Pauley Pavilion. In its 24th year as the home of the UCLA Bruins. Again, it's Richardson on Elliott. Richardson with the steal. And Richardson with the bucket.
That dunk may have surprised some, but Pooh Richardson is strong and a good leaper. The only thing about his game that lacked for the next level was the outside shot. He drove all the time because he couldn't shoot. Now his problem only is free throws, and that may come to play today. Oh, gorgeous three-point shot. What form from Ken Lofton, his second three-point bob, and Arizona leads 36 to 31 with four and a half left first half. How unusual it is to see a guy with blazing speed like Lofton have that three-point shot. Rushland. He's been off. Rebound Cook. So Cook with rebound number six. Arizona controlling the boards. Elliott with the step to the left. Bad shot and a foul. It's on Richardson. Who Richardson in his final appearance in Pauley, doing it at both ends, gets the breakaway pass with the dunk. And at the other end, he's still got Sean Elliott. All of the cards for the Bruins are in his hands. He's got he's got the whole day ahead of him, taking care of the ball, being the main man offensively, and also trying to be the stopper on an offensive machine. Nine points for Bushler, 78% free throw shooter. Fundamentally sound player, usually under control, rarely turns it over. Judd Bushler averaging 10 and a half per game. Sean Elliott leads the team, 22 per game. Anthony Cook averages 18. And Arizona leads by seven with 4.05 remaining first half. The Wildcats now in a 1-3-1 with Lofton on the baseline. He's only 5'11", but the key to this defense is he runs at that corner shooter. And as we know, UCLA is a perimeter team, so the zone could be tested. Richardson with a duck under move. He has 12. He was able to elude Muehlbach. Five point. Arizona lead. Last year, they would have been laying off of him. <laughs> and he rebounds, too. A look away that did not work. He was seeking Rochelin, who was just a step off the ball. Timeout called with 3.33 left, first half. Trash bags? Oh, there's brown ones? There's silver ones. Want to know any more? Ask Ace. That's what I do. Ace large drawstring trash bags are only $1.97, and simple green all-purpose cleaner is just $3.19. Hey, Ace is the place for me. Family transportation has come a long way. And here's the next step. The new Geo Prism. Five-door hatchback, four-door sedan. Japanese designed, American built. To carry today's families with more economy, comfort, and a commitment to quality. Geo Prism, part of the Geologic line. Now, in selected Chevrolet dealers. It's the logical way to go. So what do you think of Wendy's new chicken parmesan sandwich? Authentico, la mia ricetta. Mama says it tastes like hers, too much like hers. Chi ha rubato la mia ricetta? No, Mama, nobody stole your no, recipe. No, la mia sorella Antonetta. I wasn't just Sister oh, Antonetta. Well. Try Wendy's delicious new chicken parmesan sandwich. A whole chicken breast filet, real mozzarella, and a rich tomato sauce. It's at Wendy's now, but only for a limited time. She didn't sell your recipe to nobody, Mama. Wendy's new chicken parmesan sandwich. With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car or truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. A mother dies, a baby survives, and a father is born. What do I know about babies? Midnight callers Gary Cole and Growing Pains Joanna Kearns, those she left behind Monday. The Wildcats of Arizona gathered around head coach Lou Olson in his sixth year at Arizona, and he has turned it around and in the process may have helped bring back Western basketball. Western basketball in particular, the Pac-10, has been much maligned the last few years, and Olson took over an Arizona club that had gone 4-24, and 1-17 and in the Pacific 10 Conference. 54 years old, he was born on a farm near Mayville, North Dakota, Coached through the high school ranks, went on to great success at Long Beach City College, Long Beach State. Iowa took Iowa to the Final Four in 1980. The Silver Fox 
immaculate dresser, like yourself, Buck. He's smooth. He is really smooth, and they call what he's done the miracle on the desert. But when you think about the fact that he lost three starters from last year, it should be miracle number two. And don't think they're going to be benefits for this team after Cook and Elliott leave because the beat's going on. Brian Williams, the fine transfer who was freshman of the year in the Atlantic Coast Conference, is uh, waiting to be eligible next year. And they credit uh, Cook's great performance with working against him in practice every day. So they'll be tough. Kevin Walker was called on that foul, his third. Here comes... Derek Martin back, so Walker, who has not scored, sit down. Wayne Womack, who just checked in, will go to the line. A 70% foul shooter. Womack, a 6'8 freshman out of Pasadena, considered one of California's top players last year. And the coaches compare him to Anthony Cook because of his long arms as Walker just sat down. We will not see him until the uh, second half. You mentioned the uh, three starters lost by Arizona. The popular spark plug, Steve Kerr, is now with the Phoenix Suns. His backcourt partner, Craig McMillan, who is a uh, student assistant, and center Tom Tolbert. Off the turnover, Arizona with a seven-point lead and the ball with just under three minutes remaining in this first half. And the Wildcats will throw it in. Elliott drifting more and more to the backcourt. UCLA will zone on the out-of-bounds. Now, looking at the UCLA zone, if they attack this side, it brings Pooh Richardson back on the board. If they attack that side, it brings Pooh out and leaves Trevor Wilson on the board. So Herrick is gambling that they will attack on the right side. Oh, what a pass from Elliott to set up Cook. Sean Elliott, who had that 11-assist game some two weeks back in Tucson against UCLA with a beautiful pass, and Arizona now leads 42-33. to 33. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team, and Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. McLean, poor pass outside. Arizona in that 1-3-1 with Speedster. Lofton on the baseline. He covers both corners. Beep, beep. Richardson from three. What a stroke by Pooh Richardson, and he is now three for three from downtown, and he converted with that shot clock running down. Six-point Arizona lead. Womack called for steps. I thought McLean was laying all over him, but those are the calls you get at home. Coming up at halftime, back to the studio for Gail Gardner with a look at the scores and highlights, State Farm's rules of the game, and it'll be Tim Brown of the Raiders, Mike Quick of the Eagles in the Foot Locker Slam Fest. Lute Olson upset with that last call, has some words. As the call is made now on Womack, his first foul. Arizona is over the foul limit, one and one coming up for the freshman, Don McLean, who is two for two from the foul line. Don McLean had a 41-point game, setting a UCLA freshman record earlier this season against North Texas. And about a month later, appeared to wear down in January and February, lost 10, 12 pounds. They thought he had a case of mononucleosis. That was not uh, the issue. He fell off in his performance, but he has come on recently after that big explosion he began to get the box in one the triangle in two treatment and it just wore him down eric said he couldn't believe how much all that special attention just flat wore him down and that was the 10 pounds holding foul away from the ball on mclean that is his second foul mclean had a 27 point game against california on thursday night that is Pac-10 career high, hit 10 of 16 from the floor. Minute 17 left now, first half. That foul puts UCLA over, and Womack will go to the line. Here is Matt Othick for Ken Lofton. Lofton leaves with eight points, hit a couple of three-pointers. Second half, Georgia Tech and Clemson tied at 48, and Tennessee with the big lead. Georgia Tech and Clemson coming off of upset wins 
over uh, Duke and North Carolina last week. Wilson posting and then fronted by Womack, so forced outside. Rashadon lost it. And the arrow pointing in the direction of UCLA. Here comes Harvey Mason, the six foot three junior, checking back in. Well, Ball State with a two point lead in the second half on Western Michigan. What a season it's been for Rick Majerus in Ball State. Arizona now back to the man for man. Lou Olson keeps changing the defenses. He's gone to his bench a little bit, trying to buy some time. He has not walked away from UCLA. No big lead to take to the locker room if UCLA takes care of the ball for the last 40 seconds. Shot clock being counted down. It's down to five. Martin gets. Oh, what a shot. Derek Martin has seven. And UCLA within two. And you see the time remaining in this first half. Guess who's going to make the move if he can get the ball back. He's got it. Clear out. Down to 10. It is Elliott moving on Richardson. Elliott in a crowd. Oh, bikes it home. A beautiful shot by Elliott. One second up, and Wilson did not realize it. So at the half, in contrast to what took place two weeks ago in Tucson, UCLA hanging around, and Jim Herrick, the UCLA coach, continues his heated discussion with the officials. He has been upset throughout the first half. Both clubs head to the locker room. It is Arizona by four. We'll be back with our halftime in a moment. Racing team. The winningest team in off-road racing goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. If you'd like to get the Reebok Revenge, size 15. You can go to Foot Locker or Gargantuan Greens Locker. <clears throat> Foot Locker. Where else you gonna go? <laughs> to see more of the hot styles in athletic footwear, you can go to Foot Locker. Or you can go through these lockers. Foot Locker. Where else you gonna go? The IBM Personal System 2. Think of it as the engine of a train that links up with your business and moves it forward without leaving behind what you've already got on board, software and hardware. So your business stays on schedule for tomorrow and makes news as it races ahead. The Personal System 2 family of computers. All aboard. When you're thinking ahead, you're thinking IBM. If you want to land a good job, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to motivate yourself, how to lead others, how to perform under pressure. You can learn all these things in the Army. So no matter what career you choose, you'll really be ready to take off. Power Welcome back to Pauley Pavilion. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters. Arizona leading UCLA by four at halftime. So UCLA with an outstanding effort against the number one ranked team in the nation. And the story in his home finale, Jerome Poole Richardson, who has 15 points in the first half. Yeah, but he couldn't really contain Sean Elliott when the chips were down. That last move at the end typifies what this man can do. McLean has only two offensive opportunities in the first half. That's critical. They've got to get more offense. They've got to distribute it. They can't expect Boo to go for 30 in his home finale. They've got to distribute it better, Mark. Sean Elliott with 11. Three fouls on Kevin Walker. UCLA. No one else in difficulty. A four-point Arizona lead. Coming up our halftime activities with Gail Gardner. We'll be back right after these words from your local station. 
Tonight, Tutu Seven's got a cure for the love bug. I've been playing doctor since I was three years old. But is there a cure for what's bugging, amen? Yes, and on the Golden Girls, Sophia gets a new playmate. You bought a prize fighter? And on Empty Nest, Harry's long-lost dad tells all. You want to know if you're illegitimate? Uh, what? Tonight. An equity line from Wells Fargo lets you take delivery of the things you need for your home. I'll take it. It's a line of credit you can use for one major purchase after another. I'll take it. Simply by writing a check. Wells Fargo's opened more lines of credit for more California homeowners than any other bank. You order the tub, mister? Take it from the experts. We'll take it. Wells Fargo Bank, still coming through. We've got you covered. Southern California's number one source for news. Channel 4 News. Round, round, get around, we get around. <laughs> After Saturday Night Live on Channel 4. Welcome back to our studios in New York. I'm Gail Gardner. Elsewhere in college basketball today, Big Ten matchup in Ann Arbor. 10th-ranked Michigan over 11th-ranked Iowa. The final was 119-96. Iowa playing without senior guard B.J. Armstrong, sidelined with a knee injury, and his absence hurt. You can see Ramil Robinson from Michigan with two of his 16 first-half points. Glenn Rice had only four points in the first half, came alive in the second. Robinson with a pretty dish to Rice for two. He finished with a game-high 33, the final again. Again, Michigan winning 119 to 96. The NHL today expelled Detroit Red Wings forward Bob Probert for life. Probert, who has a history of alcohol abuse, was arrested Thursday, charged with trying to smuggle cocaine from Canada to the United States. He faces 20 years in prison. The NHL will give him a hearing following criminal proceedings. Darryl Strawberry returned to the Mets today, abandoning his demands to have his contract renegotiated and extended. Says he will play, but has no intention of staying with the club after his contract expires in two years. He had a three-run homer today against the Dodgers. The Mets lead in that game 9-8. to eight. And the Tigers have signed all-star shortstop Alan Trammell to a three-year contract extension. Terms not disclosed, but the deal makes him the highest-paid player in the history of the franchise. And left unprotected by the Colts under the NFL's new quasi-free agency system, quarterback Gary Hogaboom has signed a four-year, $3 million deal with the Phoenix Cardinals. Hogaboom, who used to play for the Cowboys, is reunited with former Dallas assistant Gene Stallings in Phoenix. Well, our slam dunk contest continues this week with an NFL matchup featuring good hands and quick feet. Literally. Mike Quick and Tim Brown. Here's Ahmad Rashad. Tim Brown is a winner. Tim Brown is a competitor. Put a ball in his hands and he's ready to play. Mike Quick is known for the Quick Six. But he was brought up in North Carolina where basketball is a tradition. Today, two superb all-around athletes go head-to-head -head in the semifinals of the Foot Locker Slam Fest. There are only four athletes left competing for the top prize of $50,000. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Foot Locker Slam Fest. I'm Ahmad Rashad, and this is my co-host, is the best basketball player that has ever played the game, Wilt Chamberlain. And we have two football players here in the semifinals. Mike Quick, Tim Brown, your pick. I like Mike Quick. I mean, not just because he's from Philadelphia, but you can't even walk through the streets of Philadelphia and not pick up something about basketball, because that's the city for basketball. So that's who you like here, that's Mike Quick. That's my choice. That's Mike my Quick, choice. all right, I'll take Tim Brown. And Tim Brown is up first, and he hails from Dallas, Texas. I hope he hasn't tried that bounce the ball thing, because Michael Jordan would have trouble with that dog. He's been unsuccessful so far with that dunk here in this competition. Oh, so he's up in the air with that little six-foot body of his or less. 
but you got to do everything perfect with that one. It seems to me that the timing has to be perfect. You got to get the ball right in front of the basket. Well, then you got to go up there and catch the ball exactly right and hold the ball with your All hands. Right. You got to be a magician almost besides the a dunker. Man from Philadelphia, Mike Quick from the Eagles. Well, Tim Brown gets no points for that attempt. You've got to be successful in order to get a rating. He gets nothing on that one. Now Mike Quick, the background from North Carolina, plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, look how easy he did. That basket's 10 feet high. Regulation height basket, I mean. And he just went over there like it was nothing. And he's another little guy. A little guy to you, Wilt, could be somebody 6'7". <laughs> but he gets a pretty good score here. He gets an 8'4". Now, Tim Brown will exercise his option here by having the lower score. He lets Mike Quick go first in the second round. Yeah, now, Mike can do anything he wants right now. He feels like the pressure's on the other guy. He can try anything. Oh, oh boy. This, now, this is... This is the unique part of this competition. By Mike Quick missing in this dunk, Tim Brown can come in now, score higher than 8-4, and win the competition here. Absolutely right. In fact, uh, he made this dunk a little early in the competition. And now he has opened the door for Tim Brown. Mike Quick now looking a little bit worried, and Tim Brown looking a little more confident. I can't believe that. He said he did in high school. I believe the luck of the Irish is also with him. But wow. <laughs> Money player, Tim Brown. The crowd wants a 10. They all want a 10. Tim Brown wants a 10. <laughs> I mean, a money player. I tell you what, uh, he is definitely a new definition for a money player. Tim Brown, everything went right for Tim Brown here in this dunk. I mean, it would have to be. I tell you, you have to be a magician to be able to do this. I mean, look at this Great little comeback body. for Tim Brown. Wow. 9.2 for Tim Brown. He surpasses Mike Quick and moves on into the finals. And I knew you could do it too, brother. I, I was telling him when you went way back there that you could. He said, what's the boy doing? I said, he knows what he's doing. I told him that. And the pressure didn't bother you? No, not at all. I mean, like I told you before, it's a dunk I've been doing since high school. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting it done. So Tim Brown is the first to qualify for our final. He'll meet the winner of tomorrow's showdown between Matt Biondi and defending champion Mike Conley. Blackman, and there's my main man, Michael Jordan, and there's a pair of Titans, Air Jordan from Nike. This is something you can buy, and there's a patented, vicious, high blind 360 slam dunk. This is something you cannot do. Let me repeat myself. This you can buy. You cannot do this. Can, can, can. No! Since the debut edition of the Sunday New York Post comes out tomorrow, our Rules of the Game this week features the Post play. Here's Dick Enberg. The Rules of the Game, brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. How much contact is legal? Stay tuned. I'm State Farm Agent Richard Clay. I take care of the Barber family's insurance, their car, their home, and life insurance, too. Jill and Sherman like the way State Farm handles all the details on their auto and home coverage. And when it comes to life insurance, they like the way I listen, to help them make sure that as their family grows, so does their State Farm protection. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Controlling rough post play. It's a difficult thing. Why? We have big players. They're strong and they're smart. Officials have to have great judgment, have good angles on the floor, and use the advantage-disadvantage philosophy. Much of the contact that we have in the post is deemed incidental by officials. Why incidental? Because no advantage is gained by the contact. But what may an offensive post player do? He may post up. He may use his body put it in a position, he may spread his arms, he may ask for the ball, but he may not push the defensive player out of his position once established. What may the defensive players do? They can set up a good defensive position, they can overplay the ball into the post, it's their job not to allow the ball to come in. And in doing that, we might have incidental contact, as long as no advantage is gained. But he may not push, shove, 
hold, or grab. He may not belly up and knock the offensive player out of his position. Those are illegal tactics, and they're fouls, and they must be called. And that's today's edition of the Rules of the Game, brought to you at halftime of every NBC college basketball game by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back at Pauley Pavilion on the campus of UCLA, we're at halftime, and Arizona leads UCLA by the score of 44-40. We'll be back after these words from your local station. I don't think he's a drifter acting upon victims of opportunity. Skillful entry indicates premeditation and plan. Bodies being arranged into an audience. There's a rich and intense fantasy life going on. The act fuels the fantasy. To understand his motive, you have to know his illusions. The Netflix premiere of the chilling psychological thriller. The psychologists call him a psychopath. They don't know what else to call him. Manhunter, Sunday. <laughs> Did you hear about the, the Colonel, Colonel and, and Sarah? <laughs> Did you hear? The Colonel and Sarah are getting together. Oh, really? The rumors are true. Kentucky Fried Chicken and Sarah Lee have gotten together. Buy any nine-piece or higher-value meal at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and we'll give you a Sarah Lee cherry pie free. Oh, the Colonel and Sarah? Get a nine-piece meal and a free pie. Such a lovely couple. Cross the road to Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah. We've got you covered. Southern California's number one source for news. Channel 4 News. Round, round, get around, we get around. Thanks for making Channel 4 Southern California's favorite. Basketball on NBC is being brought to you by Pontiac. They build excitement. And by Delco Electronics, the leader in automotive electronics. It's who we are. Well, in the first half, the Wildcats of Arizona were sparked by the play of six foot six junior Judd Bushler, who had 10 points along with 10 rebounds. He's an incredible athlete, Mark. He's a national class volleyball player, and he's one of those guys, as we see in that in that replay, that he just stays after it. They create nothing for him. He does it all himself, just on hustle. Who Richardson, the game, the game of his career. We've never seen him play better. 15 points, four assists, one turnover, three for three from three-point land, and he's still got the big guy at the other end of the floor. It's an emotional experience for him and he's responding almost perfect basketball he had one turnover and that really was a good pass and they looked away and UCLA has done it with a three-point field goal they've hit five of six and they have managed to stay within four despite that uh, technical foul marathon don't forget Arizona able to get six points on those uh, UCLA technicals we'll be right back we're not a company but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence, become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. A sports sedan that moves like a ground-level flying machine. Big, fast, and powerful. That's Pontiac Bonneville. Get on the Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! And now, with $1,000 cash back, there's no reason to wait. Experience a new Bonneville today. Get on your Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! From now on, this is what dry is. Dry is a beer that starts bold from the first 
taste, finishes clean with no aftertaste, and refreshes completely. Dry is a beer called Michelob Dry. One taste, and you'll drink it dry. The world's great Olympic champions have gathered in Budapest. The World Indoor Track and Field Championships on NBC Sports. Well, a look at the halftime statistics illustrating both clubs shooting well. Arizona 16 for 29 for 55 percent. UCLA right at the 50 uh, percent mark. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the uh, three point field goal column showing UCLA hitting five of six. Poo Richardson is three for three from downtown. Over this last seven games, Arizona's been so tough defensively, holding Oklahoma to 45, Duke 42, but UCLA has found seams in that defense. There's Elliott and uh, Cook combining for 20. That's expected. Judd Bushler, 10 points, 10 boards, and he just killed UCLA when they were concentrating their defense on the two main guys, and that's the way great teams beat you. 12,543 capacity crowd at Pauley. It is UCLA ball as we get underway in the second half. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters, UCLA in white. And Arizona in the dark blue. Trevor Wilson off the plate. So Wilson with 10 points. And Arizona now leads by two, 44 to 42. Lofton and Muehlbach are in the backcourt. Bushler up front with Elliott and Cook. This is Elliott being hawked by Richardson. Buehlbach. Lofton gets it down low. Cook off the double team. They move the ball so well. So well. Bushler misfired. Walker playing with three fouls on the rebound. Wilson back out for Walker. Not able to find the three-point shot here this afternoon. Did hit one earlier, but he's been well covered. They have respected his long-range shooting. McLean and Walker both just have two shots apiece, and UCLA has to distribute it better. Who cannot be expected to go for 15 more in the second half, although he might. Holding foul. Nice flip from Richardson to locate McLean. I'm, I'm looking for uh, UCLA to attack Cook down in there with two. Trevor Wilson went at him one time, had a chance a, a second time. I think three and four fouls on him quickly could really change the game. Foul called on Lofton. Martin on the penetration, lost it. Lofton for Cook. And Anthony Cook shows his outside touch. He's hit five of seven. He has 11 points. Arizona leads by four. We're just a minute and a half gone by in the second half. They talk about Cook improving so much, and he has, but he was all Pac-10 last year. Trevor Wilson with 12. Trevor Wilson who leads the Pac-10 in rebounding, averaging 18 a game. Cuts that lead down to two. for Wilson. Walker had a notion. Wilson with a beautiful move. Rebound McLean. And he's fouled. I think the reason that Wilson missed that shot, he really wanted to foul. And he was expecting pressure from Cook. Cook is playing soft, as is Walker on the other end. Cook had a very easy turnaround jumper then because of Walker's foul situation. Lofton called on the foul of Wilson. For Lofton, that is number three. Walker inbounds. Walker from three. Rebound, Mielbach. Matt Mielbach, six foot two sophomore from Stillwell, Kansas, with the room and takes advantage. So Arizona now with a 49 44 lead off the three point bomb by Mielbach. Milbach won his starting job because of defense, but he can stick that three. And Richardson regrouping. Wilson, yes, he's on fire. 
Trevor Wilson has 14, and Arizona now leads 49-46. Arizona comes in with a record of 23-3. and They are ranked number one in the nation. If the Wildcats can beat UCLA, they would stay on top of the polls. It would be the first time as Lofton misfires. Cook on the rebound. What a play by Anthony Cook. If Arizona wins today, it would be the first time since 1975 that a Pac-10 team has been number one in the final poll. UCLA, the last Pac-10 team to pull that off. So McLean with his first field goal. Arizona now by three, 51-48. I'm not sure you want to end up number one. Since 1949, when the AP poll started, only 17 teams have finished number one in the poll and then gone on to win the tournament. And seven of those were the lock in the great wooden years. Offensive rebounding. Double zero, AC, the stick back king. Chant of defense from the crowd at Pauley. Bush and the foul. Elliott, who was upset, he slammed the ball down. Some of the UCLA players wanted a technical foul. Certainly in their mind, the technical called early in the game on Kevin Walker. And then Coach Jim Harrick upset, and he was hit with the tee. And he went after the officials again at half. Just a passing exchange. He is not forgiven or forgotten. Oh, showtime. Yes, interesting move. <laughs> Trevor got that one out of the old Globetrotter notebook. McLean, and he will go to the line, fouled by Bushler for Judd Bushler, his second foul. So Don McLean very much back into the offense, as you mentioned, took only two shots in the first half, but now looking uh, for the shots. He's averaging just under 19 per game. He had that 41-point game back in December against North Texas. And as you can see, a pretty nice uh, list of players, former UCLA Bruins, who have hit 41 or more. They knew he could score when they recruited him. I, I think he's a better rebounder than most people expected. He's very mature. He, he doesn't waste the dribble. If he can get it going here, it's going to put a lot of pressure on a very good Arizona defense. UCLA within one, and Arizona calling for time. You feel the motion, the fever is high. If you like your cars big, smooth, and powerful, this ought to be your next one. The Pontiac Bonneville. Yeah. And now with $1,000 cash back, there's no reason to wait. Experience a new Bonneville today. Get on your Pontiac. There's a new force in the air. You can't beat it, and you can only buy it at Foot Locker. The Nike Air Court Force, exclusively at Foot Locker. Where else you gonna go? In the summer games, a marathoner blamed his disappointing finish on the fit of his shoes. Perhaps he should have started at Foot Locker. Foot Locker, where else you gonna go? What's in a name? The Kemper name means the security of solid insurance protection for your life, home, business, and auto, even reinsurance protection. But Kemper's more than insurance. It's Kemper financial products, like mutual funds, annuities, and money market funds, working to bring you better tomorrows, insurance, and investments. Ask for them by name. Kemper. Sunday, the Duke Blue Devils battle the Tar Heels of North Carolina. College basketball, it's the stuff weekends are made of on NBC Sports. Sean Elliott, who made the great play to stretch the Arizona lead to four. Trevor Wilson had a chance for a last second shot. He had a very hot first half, but the clock at his eye level at that end of the floor was not functioning. So while he didn't look like a very smart player, obviously the clock was not working. He thought he had more time, and, uh, you know, he just looked dumb on the play. And that was at the end of the half. So uh, Wilson, who played extremely well, had a downer at the end, but it wasn't his fault. 
now the uh, the clock that is not working is is uh, is going to be the problem of Arizona. Identical shooting by Arizona and UCLA. Four minutes have gone by in the second half. Arizona with the ball. They lead by one. Gilbach played by Wilson. Elliott lost it. McLean able to come up with it. Sean Elliott not having one of his better days to this point. He's three for eight. Has a total of 11 points. That time the Bruins went to a diamond and one and Jim Herrick got him standing. Richardson. Now that was anticipated by Cook. Good play by Anthony Cook. Trevor Wilson has to respect his quickness and come meet the pass. Mulebach wide open. Yes. Matt Mulebach. And Arizona off that three-point bomb for Mulebach, his second, takes a four-point lead. Matt Mulebach, who has emerged as a starter after seeing limited playing time last year as a freshman. He was actually the fifth guard on the squad. McLean line drives it home. Arizona by two, 54-52. So Don McLean very much part of the offense here in the early moments of the second half. Here is Cook under pressure. And UCLA can tie it. Martin. Wilson. Yes. The game is tied at 54. He really reminds you of the old UCLA forwards, especially when he banks that ball. John Wooden's Indiana background, all those big forwards with Bill Elaine pull up and put it in off the window. Mulebach from three. And the foul on Arizona. And again, Sean Elliott is upset. Luke Olson not happy. That is number three on Elliott. Luke Olson had two technical fouls in the big showdown against Duke in the Meadowlands last week. And he's letting them know about it. Of course, Duke was able to come back with a 30-3 run after being absolutely buried by the Wildcats early. Arizona has led by as many as 11. UCLA's only lead early in the game by the score of 10-9. That is number three on Mubach. So while Arizona is piling up the fouls here at the start of the second half, UCLA does not have any. That's the third team foul on the Wildcats. Who used his old Philly move on that one. He really did push off with the lead arm. McLean gets it out. Here is Martin. Rebounded by Cook. Arizona 23 and 3. Their three losses at North Carolina, at Stanford, at Oklahoma by two. And Arizona takes a two-point lead. Bushler has 12 points. Arizona 56. UCLA 54. Richardson got caught in the air. Here comes Lofton. Lofton with the scoop. And Arizona leads by four. Very much under control. Lofton, who has been criticized because sometimes that speed gets him out of control, was very poised. Jim Herrick wants to talk about it. A good move. Jim Herrick sensing an Arizona run, calling for the timeout. Seven minutes gone by. Second half. Ken Lofton with the bucket to give the Wildcats the four-point lead. You hear the thunder, thunder. A sports sedan that moves like a ground-level flying machine. Big, fast, and powerful. That's Pontiac Bonneville. Get on the Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! And now, with $1,000 cash back, there's no reason to wait. Experience a new Bonneville today. Get on your Pontiac! Rebuild excitement! Pontiac there's a motor oil that talks about world-class protection. Catchy phrase, but Valvoline is recommended by name in the owner's manuals of these world-class cars. The other motor oil is not. Whatever you drive, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any car manufacturer. Around the world, people who know use Valvoline. I'm State Farm Agent Jack Frank. 
I'd like to tell you about one of my car insurance policyholders, Paul Messer. For 24 years, we helped Paul keep his coverages up to date. Then one day, he had an accident. Then he really found out about the fast, fair claim service we promised him. Great claim service is one of the reasons Paul came to State Farm 24 years ago, and it's a big reason he's going to stay. Hi, Paul. Like good good neighbor, State Farm is there. Gail Gardner in New York. Third round of the Honda Classic coming up after basketball. Second round leader Dan Paul is now tied for the lead with Ted Schultz. Steve Pate, five birdies on the front nine, is now in third, two strokes back. Six others, just three back. Let's go back to Pauly Pavilion. Thank you, Gail. So that is coming up next from Carl Springs, Florida. They finally, as Gail mentioned, finished the, the second round and the third round action underway and will be seen right here at NBC following Arizona and UCLA. Final score, Tennessee winning big over Vanderbilt, Missouri by one over Colorado. Four point, Arizona lead, UCLA in the white. In possession, Wilson. And rebounded by Cook. Wilson fading away that time instead of putting pressure down inside. Bushler. Bushler on the follow. Judd Bushler opening up a six-point lead for Arizona. He had five offensive boards in the first half to go with his five defensive. The man has a nose for the ball. 14 points for Bushler. Came at averaging 10 and a half per game. Walker's pass stolen. What a play by Bushler. Well, it was Lofton that got a hand on it that created it. No excuse for that. Walker at 6'10 can pass right over the 5'11 Lofton. Just a careless pass. You can't make those against Arizona. As I pointed out, they held Oklahoma to 45 and Duke to 42. And everybody else averaging 41 points from the floor in this seven-game tear. They can play the D. Locking foul on Kevin Walker. So for Walker, that is number four. And UCLA commits its first foul of the second half. Here comes Charles Rushlin. Rushlin, the six foot seven senior out of Toronto. Walker sits down. Only three points for Kevin Walker. And Cook to the line. He's one for two from the line. Walker has to score points out there. He's played some good defense, and he's made a few good passes, but if he's going to justify his existence, he's got to put some numbers on the board. Rochelle gives him more quickness, more jumping ability, better defense. Look at the arms on Anthony Cook. He claims he can reach 9 foot 1 standing flat-footed. I would not doubt him. I'd love to play him flat-footed. <laughs> what he scares me is when he gets over the square. Back to man for man. Continual changing defenses. Lute Olsen makes your guards think. Wilson getting in. Taking advantage of the overplay by Elliott. So Trevor Wilson has 18. He has scored 10 of his 18 here in the second half. 11.20 to go in the second half. And Arizona leads by five. Gilbach, Cook, off the double team, gets it out. Lofton lost it. Martin, who came up with the steal, and then does it at the other end to move the Bruins within three. 61-58. Cook was tentative that time. He had the ball in the box and didn't make a move to the basket. Ilbach. Rebound, Elliott, and fouled by Wilson. That's number one on Trevor Wilson. So Sean Elliott will go to the line. He is five for five from the free throw line. The last time these clubs met two weeks ago in Tucson, Sean Elliott had the 35 point game and also uh, broke the record that was held by Lou Alcindor most points in at the time Pac-8 uh, competition. And uh, Pooh Richardson was the first player on either team to congratulate Sean Elliott after the uh, foul shot that uh, broke the record. And Pooh said congratulations 
keep going. I thought it was a great thing, and it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, he said to Sean Elliott. Oh, yeah. A classic exchange between the two. Well, he's a classic kid. He's done it all very well. He scared the heck out of Lute Olsen and the Wildcat fans when he thought about going out last year, but he stayed in it. His work well formed. It usually does. There are a lot of sad stories with guys going out early. Here's Wilson. Arizona by two, 63-60. Although in Sean Elliott's case, I don't have any questions. At least in my mind that he would have been uh, eventually, uh, had he gone out last year, would have been a star in the NBA, as he will be. McLean with the rebound. Richardson from three. Yes! And the game is tied at 63. Danny Ferry was quoted after the Meadowlands game when Arizona beat Duke. He said, yeah, I think Arizona on a neutral floor is the best team in the country. But let it be known right here, Paulie Pavilion is not a neutral floor. The Bruins are inspired. And I hope they don't give Trevor Wilson a wake-up call. This is confidence. He pulls up and nails it. The elbow is in. The confidence is there. He wants it. Lofton. Able to hit off glass, and Arizona leads by two, 65-63. Ken Lofton has had an outstanding day. Lofton now on that baseline has to contend with some good screens by Wilson. Washelin had it deflected. Good play by Elliott, got a piece of it. Bushler. Rebound, McLean. Nine minutes left in the game. McLean. Yes. The game is tied at 65. With Martin and Richardson penetrating, if McLean will post up out there, he can get that shot. He has not really made himself available. That's inexperience. Both of the UCLA guards are excellent penetrators, and they'll find him. Hook foul by Rochelin. Look out. Wilson involved, along with Bushler. And the Arizona bench upset with Trevor Wilson. They felt he shoved Judd Bushler. And the officials looking to uh, calm things down. It's times like this you need Ferdy Pacheco, who's camped out in Sacramento waiting for your fight tomorrow. Keeps the ball alive, under control. There's McLean posted up, and he can even go to three and do it. Hard to believe, a rookie had 41. And that assist number eight for Pooh Richardson, and he joins a very select list. Only 11 players have attained 800 or more assists during the course of their career, and you can add Pooh Richardson to that list with assist number 800. And apparently, a technical foul was called. And Anthony Cook. Now, this has to be a personal foul. Now the technical. Uh, that was the uh, personal. And Cook continues to have problems at the line. He's two for six from the uh, free throw line. Now the technical being taken by Bushler, who is a 78% free throw shooter. Now three for three from the line. So it was Cook who shot the, uh, the personal foul. And now Bushler for the technicals. Bruins very fortunate that Trevor Wilson is not ejected from the game. There are only six recruited players on Jim Herrick's bench right now, and they're in this one. They can't afford to lose anybody, and Wilson's having one of the better games I've ever seen him play. Now we get word from the scorer's table they did not call a technical. It was an intentional foul that put uh, Bushler on the line, and now possession, as you see, to Arizona with eight and a half left in the game. And Arizona leading by two. Three-pointer for Sean Elliott. That is his first three-point bomb. He's been concentrating on taking Pooh Richardson inside. He really hasn't had the experience out there. 
and Pooh has bellied up on him out there and made him penetrate. 16 points for Elliott. The recheck by Cook. McLean draws the foul. It's called on Bushler. That's three on Bushler. UCLA not known to be strong down inside. There's Cook's move to the basket, challenging Rocheland. And we see Trevor Wilson just with a little bitty shove, like, yeah. out of here, man. Don't get on my back. Don't get in my face. And it was right in front of the Arizona bench. And with an emotional arena like this, that's how bad things happen. I credit the Arizona bench for their, uh, for their discipline, for their keeping their cool. When one of your players gets decked right in front of you, there is a temptation to react. And Arizona able to pick up five points on that play off the technical fouls at the start of the game on Kevin Walker and Coach Jim Harrick. They had a six-point play. So major factors in the game here today, the technical and the uh, intentional fouls that were called. And now a personal foul being indicated. Trevor Wilson picks up a second, and again, Jim Harrick is upset. Neither coach has been happy this afternoon. Well, he's just under eight minutes, and it's a three-point game. Harrick can't afford another one. Thinking back to that six-point play in, in the first half, he's got to keep that program rolled up and coach his team. Timeout has been taken. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. One time only is the unsub team tonight. I just want to stop these killings. The bizarre manhunt. Our unsub is a cop. Unknown subject tonight, following the comedies. This year, see Europe from an American point of view. With daily service to 13 cities, including new service to Brussels, Stockholm, Lyon, and Hamburg. American Airlines, something special to Europe. Attention. One moment, please. Fritz. I hate my name. What'll happen if you watch? I got $4 million. Come on. Trust me. What'll you see? My name is Elvis Impersonator. Oh, a Japanese Elvis impersonator? That's like an Irish Bruce Lee impersonator. Thank you very much. What else will you see? Passive restraint systems. <laughs> I'm too much of a wimp for that. That really rots my sock. It's Fritz. After Saturday Night Live on Channel 4. Health Facts at 4.30 on Channel 4. College basketball is being brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. And by Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store. Where else are you going to go? Marv Albert, Bucky Waters from Pauley Pavilion on the campus of UCLA, three apiece for Elliott, Bushler, and Lofton. Walker with four, Richardson with three, and a moment ago, Wilson picked up his second with 7.49 remaining of the game. And Arizona leading UCLA 70-67. The Wildcats of Arizona led by as many as 11. UCLA had a one-point lead briefly and very early. And the Bruins keep coming back. They've done it with a three-point field goal. They've led by Jerome, been led by Jerome Poo Richardson, who in his home finale has a total of 18 points, eight assists, one of his best games over a illustrious four-year career, and that will be UCLA ball, although Poo has really come on this season as a senior. He was considered an underachiever as a a freshman, sophomore, and junior. He has emerged. Wilson. Yes. It is down to a one-point Arizona lead. 70-69 as Elliott comes across and now is met by Derek Martin. UCLA still has to think about it, taking that ball to the basket and attacking Sean Elliott, trying to get that fourth one. I know Lute Olsen's just delighted to see them shooting jump shots. Bushler fouled on the play. And he was hit by McLean. Three on McLean. So Bushler 
four for four from the line will shoot two more. They have not been able to keep him off the board. A total of 12 rebounds. And now 17 points for the six foot six junior from Poway, California, Judd that's, Bushler. That's suburban San Diego, and he was just recently admitted to the San Diego Hall of Champions, which is quite an honor. He's only a junior. Well, he's a, a coach's player. The San Diego Hall of Champions? Yep, it, it really is. Honest, I wouldn't kid about something serious like that. Did you see Elliot push out under there? A little testy. Elliot. Fans wanted to travel. And Sean Elliott giving Arizona a five-point lead. 74. 69. He's had a tough time in the half-court defense because UCLA has zeroed in on him. But in transition is where Sean Elliott really hurts you. He'll pick up and shoot that three right over your guards. 18 for Elliott. He shot 5 for 11. Wilson couldn't find anyone of the steal by Mulebach. There really isn't any inside force in there for the Bruins. They better score on the perimeter. Wilson's not taking it to the basket. Nobody else out there except the guards are really go for the rim guys. Nice fake. And a beautiful crossover for Elliott. So down the stretch, Sean Elliott showing signs of life. Did not have a good one last week against Duke. Only six for 21, but then hit the critical shot. A three-pointer with 53 seconds left. And Elliott now has led Arizona to a seven-point lead. We'll be right back. We're not a company, but no company has more pride in what they do or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future, one that goes far beyond the ordinary, one that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, the Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. This new old Cutlass Calais International Series reminds me of me. Ah! It just won't quit. Fact is, I'm so revved on the new style and features, no way am I coming in. Yeah, yeah. That quad four engine really cooks. My dad and granddad would love it. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. It sure suits me and Betty Jo. This is the new generation of olds. Hey, hey. How about the president's on the phone? Hey, try it. Racing team. The winningest team in off-road racing goes nowhere without craftsman tools. From their durable precision power tools to hand tools that are guaranteed forever. So make sure it's a craftsman, because you don't want to get stuck with anything else. Tony the Tiger Lopez. This dangerous young champion mauls his opponents with stinging jabs and crisp right hands. Rocky Lockridge, it's time for war, and the veteran wants the title back. The IBF Junior Lightweight Championship, the rematch of Ring Magazine's Fight of the Year, live on NBC Sports World. Arizona graduate assistant Craig McMillan. You remember him as a part of that outstanding backcourt for Arizona last season, teaming up with Steve Kerr. Well, Craig now emulates the top players of the opposition, and he's shown versatility in his role. Uh, last week, he was Danny Ferry. Last night at practice, he was Pooh Richardson. What Mr. a guy. Mr. Chameleon. Well, they're getting their money's worth out of that graduate assistant. A good one. Average six points, four assists, and a solid backcourt last year with Steve Kerr. This year, the Wildcats' backcourt is quicker with Lofton's presence. Arizona by seven. UCLA in possession with 5.20 remaining of the game. Here is Martin from three. Derek Martin with his second three-point field goal. And UCLA moves within four. 76-72. Richardson is back on Elliott. Here is Elliott. He lost the grip. Bushler getting to it, rebound Wilson, and a fast break for the Bronze. Lofton is back, Richardson tripped up. 
foul committed by Lofton. That is his fourth. Boo Richardson still inspired after making a fine defensive play on Sean Elliott. Probably took the ball in there too hard. He's got to be careful that he doesn't let this drive with just under five minutes to go get him into difficulty. He would have been much better off to just tap dance a little bit and let it sift out. He barreled right down into the defense. Was fortunate. Who not a good free throw shooter. 0 for 3 against California. And the other night, the uh, hits the first. He's only 56% from the line. He is having himself a career afternoon. That's uh, that's the last glitch on the resume. With the outside shot coming into place with everything else, the free throws are still a bugaboo. And it is called Arizona ball. A three-point Wildcat lead. Just under five minutes remaining in the game. Number one ranked Arizona, 23-3. and three. UCLA, winners of three straight, nine of 11. They are 19 and seven. Both schools looking to the Pac-10 tournament starting Thursday at the Forum. And the UCLA foul is called. Sean Elliott will go to the line. It's called on Trevor Wilson, so that's three on Wilson. Who needs help down there? No question, Elliott giving up that ball from the point guard position and going right to the block. And the Bruins have to be aware. They need some muscle down there. Who's good? But he cannot contain that man. Not on the block. That is a rare miss for Sean Elliott, an 82% foul shooter. He had hit his first seven at the line. Both teams are now over the limit. And Arizona leads by four, 77, 73. Remember, two weeks ago, UCLA suffered its all-time worst loss in Tucson. They were beaten by Arizona by 38 points. The Wildcats now in a 1-3-1 zone. It's time for the perimeter shooters to do it. Martin way off and rebounded by Muehlbach. Walker McLean, somebody's got to get hot out there if the Bruins are going to make their move. Elliott moving in traffic and hitting. What a bucket by Sean Elliott. And Arizona now leads by 6, 79, 73. It's simple. He plays every position and scores from every position. Gilbach off the steal. And Arizona now by 8, 81, 73. Eric's got to think about a timeout right now. It's getting away from him. 12 points for Matt Gilbach. Sean Elliott has 23. Here is Wilson, 81-75, three and a half left in the game. Trevor Wilson has had an outstanding second half, 24 points in all. He is 12 for 18 from the field. Still, UCLA not aware that Poo's posted up down there. There's too much room for, for Sean Elliott to operate. The double team on Cook, offensive foul. Anthony Cook commits his third. Lute Olsen cheerleading. No problem with that call. He's happy with his team going to the basket. UCLA has to solve this, this trap. Look at Lofton cheating out there. Boy, is he quick. He can cover both corners. UCLA passing against his zone has been very harmful. Walker from three. Yes. Kevin Walker, who's been very quiet. He's been foul plagued, hitting his second three-point field goal, and UCLA continues to hang in. Down by three with 2.40 left in the game. Lofton has to win that count, and a foul is called. It appeared that they isolated that time. Lofton at the top of the key. That time, UCLA was concentrating on helping with Sean Elliott down low, and they left the top of the key wide open. And Lofton can embarrass you there. Derek Martin committing the foul. There's Derek, freshman out of Compton, California, in the starting lineup because UCLA lost its starting guard, Gerald Matkins, who suffered multiple fractures of the pelvis in a campus traffic accident. Matkins riding a moped, and uh, Jim Harrick hopes that he will be back next season. He has made... Better progress than anticipated. Ken Lofton with his first free throw. 
and Arizona leads by four with 2.38 remaining in the game. So a five-point Wildcat lead. Boy, that was a brick that came down. Not a good-looking shot on that one. Now it's man for man. I'm amazed Arizona coming out of that zone. It couldn't be just Walker's one field goal. I think it's just part of the changing defense is to keep you on your heels. Richardson with the acceleration and a nice hesitation move. So the Bruins trail Arizona by three, 83-80. And he took that one into Anthony Cook's face. No problem with fouls now. Everybody playing all out. And Sean Elliott comes right back. But an offensive foul has been called. Foul is on number 32, Sean Elliott after the shot. Basket counts, plus the foul. Sean Elliott commits his fourth. It is a one-on-one -one situation at both ends, so the basket is good, and Elliott is called on the charge, but it will put Trevor Wilson on the line. Here's that floating move that can get him into trouble. Instead of going straight up, he's drifting in, and that time Trevor Wilson wisely held his ground, didn't go for the ball, took the charge. Now UCLA can come down at the other end, and especially if Arizona's in a man-for-man -man defense. Try to isolate and take advantage of that four-foul situation. Lofton stealing the rebound, a big play, but he's called for a discontinue. Lofton claiming that a UCLA hand got in and that he did not discontinue, but the ball goes back to UCLA. Normally, it's not smart to try to make a defensive stand out there, but their guards are wise enough to know that they couldn't catch him from behind. Again, Lofton with the play. And uh, the arrow is pointed in the direction of Arizona. And the uh, Bruins are claiming that there was not possession, that it should not have been a tie-up, that the ball was still loose. I would it have to be, agree with that. It will be Arizona ball. But I'll tell you, officials in an, in an emotional environment like this see that as potentially trouble, especially since we've had one guy put on his back already. They tend to, to up-tempo that call a little bit for fear that there may be a fracas. Now the arrow pointed in the direction of UCLA with a minute 50 to go in the game. Both teams are over the foul limit. Elliott and the Bruins in possession. They're down by five, 85-80. Wilson going the distance. What a move. Right down through the Arizona defense. You can't do that. You just can't do that. But he did. Trevor Wilson with 26 points. 18 of his 26 in the second half. UCLA down by three. It will be UCLA ball. And Arizona wants to talk it over. Timeout call. 121 left in the game when we come back. UCLA down by three, and they will have the ball. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah, too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. What are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> hey, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. My grandfather, Norman Rockwell, captured the spirit of the American family. Oldsmobile has its eye on a new generation, and our 88 Royale fits right into the picture. An honest American value with a tradition of comfort. A modern 3800 V6 engine and front-wheel drive. For today's American family, the 88 Royale is state-of-the-art. Trevor Wilson, the economics major, and it's moves like him, like this one, that make him the merchant of menace. He goes right by Anthony Cook. Sean Elliott with four fouls would normally have been there to be a stopper, but he just 
punch this ticket and let him go by. And it was a smart move. They're going to need Elliott as they did last week wait a in, moment. The, wait, wait, in wait. the Meadowlands in the showdown of marquee players. Did, did you say the, the merchant, merchant of, of Menace? Menace? Is that one of your own? Is That's an ad lib. I've been waiting for that one all night long. <laughs> Trevor Wilson for 26 points, big, big game, overcoming the fact that Walker and McLean have not had big games, but the story for UCLA, with all the pressure, has been Pooh Richardson. 21 points, 12 assists for Pooh, who brings it across, minute 15, remaining of the game. UCLA with the ball, down by three. The top-ranked Arizona. And it's Cook on Wilson, the guy that's hurt him recently. Wilson off the spin. Let's see what the call is. It is a traveling violation. What a move, but lost it on the turnover. Credit that one to Anthony Cook. That was an altered shot that caused the feet to shuffle. That's respect. And Arizona does good work off the uh, pressure foul on Walker. So that is number five. Kevin Walker has fouled out. It was Kevin Walker who picked up the early fouls and also drew a technical foul, and technical fouls have really cost UCLA this afternoon. It led to a, a six-point play earlier than the technicals, and a deliberate foul uh, led to a five-point play for Arizona, and that's uh, certainly critical in this game. The Honda Classic will follow UCLA and Arizona. Anthony Cook is two for six from the line, but hits a big one there. He's a 62% free throw shooter. Arizona extends to a four point lead with 54 seconds remaining in the game. Rochelle in substitution gives UCLA more quickness, but Walker was their premier three point shooter and they gotta be thinking threes now. And there is one who misses from three-point range for the first time, but it's Wilson with the putback, 86-84, a two-point Arizona lead, timeout taken with 41 seconds remaining in the second half. You wouldn't believe the stuff my dad had to do to get his hands on his dream machine. <laughs> you name it, he'd do it. <laughs> I get queasy just thinking about it. <laughs> Here's my dream machine, the new Cutlass Supreme. And all I had to do to get one was go to my old dealer. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Ignition. This is the new generation of old. Wow. The world's great Olympic champions have gathered in Budapest. The World Indoor Track and Field Championships on NBC Sports. Well, it's a two-point game. UCLA hanging in right throughout, 41 seconds remaining. And uh, certainly, when we talk about the possibility of NCAA competition for the Bruins of UCLA, although Jim Harrick felt uh, that they have it locked up, the performance today should uh, cinch it for the Bruins. Absolutely, Marv. It takes the pressure off them having to have the big performance in the tournament. But this game last year was two points in overtime, and that was Lute Olsen's final four team. So it's a script written here. Only can be done in Hollywood. We've had a great one. And a capacity crowd reacting uh, right throughout here at uh, Pauley Pavilion. It's been an emotional game for the UCLA Bruins, in particular for a senior Pooh Richardson who has come up big in his final home game. Cook off the pass from Elliott, and the foul is called. So again, Anthony Cook will go to the line. We're down to 31 seconds remaining. The two franchise players in the payoff for Arizona. Elliott using his consummate skills as the 6'8 guard to get over the double teams. And I was surprised that Cook went for the basket. Under those circumstances, he is not shooting free throws well today. They might have been wiser to run a little time off the clock, but they didn't. Three for eight from the line, but he's hit a couple in the clutch. Down the stretch, Anthony Cook, six foot nine senior from Los Angeles, who has had another solid game. And look at how he has grown over the years from the offensive point of view. So Cook hits on both, and Arizona leads by four. 88, 84. The Bruins are looking at man for man. Martin from three. Rebound Wilson. And now 10 for 11 from the field. 
<laughs> in the second half. It is a two-point game. 21 seconds remaining in the second half. The timeout was taken by UCLA to uh, stop the clock, and when we resume, it will be Arizona ball. The Chevrolet most valuable players of today's game, Poo Richardson of UCLA and Judd Bushler of Arizona. Uh, Bushler with an outstanding all-around game, 18 points, 13 rebounds. Sean Elliott has uh, come on strong down the stretch. Trevor Wilson has been terrific. Uh, for the Bruins of UCLA, but we go with uh, Pooh and Judd. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. Well, the NBC Boxing Tour continuing tomorrow. I'll be making my way to the uh, state capital of Barkey, Sacramento, California. Tony the Tiger Lopez, Rocky Lockridge. I'll be joined by the uh, fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. I know a close personal friend of yours. And he's already brought Sacramento to its knees, I'm, I'm sure. Certain, yes. <laughs> but this is a rematch yes. of a terrific fight last July, a fight that saw Lopez win the championship by beating Lockridge by unanimous decision. UCLA using its final timeout. 21 seconds remaining. Arizona with the two timeouts left. It is a two-point Arizona lead, and Bushler gets it across. And let's see what the call is here. A foul on UCLA. An intentional foul. Jim Herrick's out of the box. So that means the two shots plus possession. That's a killer. Boy, that's a tough call, and that call was made right in Lute Olsen's lap, which is a point... Herrick is trying to make up there as he is right on the edge of the coaching box. Rushland picked up the foul. Lofton, a 71% free throw shooter. Now two for three from the line. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of NBC's basketball and the director of... Uh, check that. Uh, George Frinkel, the coordinating producer. Our director today, Dick Klein... And today's game produced by Kenneth Roy Edmondson, technical director Skip Hornbrook. Only 10 seconds remaining. Wilson and Richardson going for the steal. And the foul called on Richardson, his fourth. So again, one and one. This time, though, it's Sean Elliott, who is eight for nine from the line. Arizona 23 for 32 at the free throw stripe. UCLA has only gone to the line 13 times. They've hit 10 of 13. Two weeks in a row. It goes right down to the free throw line. In the Meadowlands last week against Duke, the freshman Christian Leitner missed two that could have tied the game after this guy, Sean Elliott, buried a big shot in a big game. Now it's right on his hands again. 26 points for Sean Elliott. Eight seconds left. And Arizona by three. UCLA does not have any timeouts left. The Bruins are going to have to go for a quick three, and they can tie. All right, here's the time running down. Five seconds. Martin from three. And it was out of bounds. So Martin with the air ball from three-point range. Boo Richardson very upset. One second remaining, and that will do it. A disappointing ending for the Bruins of UCLA, who have been converting their three-point shots, but not able to do it in the final seconds. And Arizona has defeated UCLA for a sweep of the regular season series. They win at 89-86. Arizona, number one in the country at 24-3. They're 17-1 in the Pac-10. And UCLA now 19-8. 13 and 5 in the Pac 10. Duke and North Carolina tomorrow on NBC. Dick Enberg, Al McGuire starting 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters saying so long from Poly Pavilion on the campus of UCLA. Stay tuned for the Honda Classic. Hi, and welcome again to.